What's going on, everybody? Joe Munoz, OneStepPrep.com. Okay, hey, check it out. Um, I want to talk to you in this video about the differences in starting a 737NG engine versus an A320. And for those of you that don't know my story, really quick, the 737NG, I came to get typed on the 73NG after winning the type rating out of a raffle. Out of a raffle. I was at a job fair. Uh, with no intention, by the way, of uh, becoming an instructor on a type on 737 or A320, I, like this is instructing was not even on my radar at the time. And this was maybe uh, nine, ten years back. And I throw my name in a fishbowl for a raffle of a 737NG type rating, and I win. Okay, and I get typed. I, I decide or discover really that I love uh, this training world, simulators, ground school, fixed base. Obviously, I went through this whole entire type rating process on the 73 and decided that I freaking love this training game. And I, I stick to it, and obviously, uh, well, here we are now uh, with One Step Prep, right? So, kind of the rest is history, but what happened, come to find out later on, not only that academy that typed me on the 737, I also got typed on the A320 from the same academy, and I was teaching both aircraft, and a lot of questions have come, particularly as of recent, for pilots that are flying 7.3 that may end up having to go to a 320 or a 320 that may have to go to 7.3. A lot of industry movement right now. Uh, really for unfortunate reasons, I hope you and your family are weathering this well, but I want to talk to you in particularly transitioning between the 7.3 and the 320 and on this video, the actual engine starting, okay, of the 737NG versus the 320. So in a nutshell, I'm going to give you the very short answer and then I'm going to give you the longer answer. So the short answer is this. The A320 engine start process is, is basically uh, two motions, okay? We turn the ignition select switch and we put the master switch on and you can go look outside the window, sip your coffee, do whatever, right? You don't really have to pay attention to it. So it's very automated, very simple start process. Not true for the 737, however. 737, you have to ensure that you turn the packs off, make sure we have duct pressure, then we gotta put a start switch to ground, open the start valve, start a uh, sequence where we're looking for 25% N2, we raise an engine start lever up, which opens a fuel valve, which completes the ignition circuit, and then we make sure the EGT doesn't outpace the N2 so we don't get a hot start or a hung start or a wet start, we're looking for all these start abnormalities. You're responsible for detecting and acting accordingly with these start anomalies, not the case on a 320 because we have a FADEC, otherwise known as a full authority digital engine control, that handles the whole thing for you. So let me walk you through a process for an NG, and I'm gonna walk you through a process for a 320, but from a very top-down view as of now, you should probably understand that the 7.3 is a bit more involved in particular when we're starting uh, the engine, okay? And I got a special guest with me here, okay, in the studio. If you guys wanna come here, by the way, while I record these things live, come. Come sit down, man. Come, come. I don't know. We got to put some chairs in here or something. But you can come in here. Our office is open for you. We're in Miami. We're on 36th Street, Crystal Palace, 5600. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you the address. Okay, it's 5600 Northwest 36th Street, uh, Miami, Florida, 33166. We're on the fifth floor, Suite 5000. Come. COVID or no COVID, I promise you, we will be here. Okay. So, all right. Let's get into the NG. 737 NG start sequence. First thing, we gotta have the APU running. Same would be true basically on the 320 as well, right? I gotta have APU running, I gotta have an air source. Okay, you could do it of course with an external start card as well. Let's just assume the APU is running. So we have the APU running, that's the first thing. APU bleed is on. And now when it comes time to engine start, we need to turn the packs off. Okay, so those of you that have never flown a 73, but perhaps you've jump seated and you look at the flight crew starting an engine, it looks like they're doing a bunch of this over here. Whereas compared to an A320, they're literally doing two little things. And you're like, man, why are one people over here constructing, they're building the airplane and these people are over here looking out the window. What's going on, right? So on this NG, you have to turn the packs off. Why? Because of course we need the APU bleed air to have sufficient air pressure to flow through the start valve to start the, to get the N2 rotation to where we're going to get it to, which I'll cover here in just a second. So at 20, so at first thing, we're getting to 25%, but first thing when I turn the packs off, on the NG you will notice that your duct pressure gauge is actually an on-demand pressure gauge. In other words, when you place the start switch to the ground position, the duct pressure will increase to 30 PSI, which is what is needed for engine start at sea level is 30 PSI, okay? But if you don't have the start switch in ground, there is not a needed demand for that much PSI in the ducting, and as a result of that, you won't have that much PSI in the ducting. So 
Why am I saying all this? Well, you're going to turn the packs off. Step number one. Step number two, we're going to place the start switch into the ground position. When you place the start switch into the ground position, we need to observe an amber light on the main instrument panel that says start valve open. When the start valve open enunciates, we now have additional demand for additional bleed air to the start valve. So if you reference the pneumatic gauge uh, on the overhead panel, specifically on the pneumatic panel, uh, you will see 30 PSI, assuming sea level, okay? And by the way, if you're curious, for every 1,000 feet above sea level, that needed PSI will reduce by half a PSI, okay? So you're looking for, first, let's go back, right? We've got the packs off, we place the start switch to ground, we've opened the start valve, we've observed the amber start valve open indication, we've looked for the 30 PSI from the on-demand gauge on the pneumatics panel, and now, captain is looking for 25% N2. Then at 25% N2, the engine start lever will be raised to the idle detent. Now, in the idle detent, two things are going to happen. Number one, the engine fuel valve is going to open, which is notable on the fuel panel by a bright indication. That means the valve is in transit, and then it's going to extinguish, tells us the valve is open. So we're opening the valve, and number two, we're completing the ignition circuit, and all of that is done via that engine start lever. And now we have our eyes peeled. We're looking at our... Uh, the upper display, if you will, on the NG that is showing us the EGT and the N2. And we're going to notice that your, as your N2 comes to life and it's spooling, typically at a rate of approximately 1% per second, we want to ensure the EGT does never uh, spike or outpace the N2. Otherwise, you could potentially have a hot start. We're also referencing N2 to make sure we don't have a hung start. We're referencing EGT to make sure we don't have what's called a no light off or a no EGT or a no ignition, right? Different names for it. But you are in charge of all that. And if you see any type of start anomaly, Captain, it would be your responsibility to bring the engine start lever to the cutoff position. Bring the engine start lever to the cutoff position. We're going to allow the engine to motor for 60 seconds if the start switch hasn't start, has not snapped to the off position. And the start switch will snap to the off position on the NG when your N2 reaches 56%. It'll automatically switch to the off position. If it hasn't yet done that, we allow the motor, the engine to motor for 60 seconds. If it has done that, per the QRH guidance, which we would reference for the aborted engine start, we're going to have to place it back to the ground position to motor it for 60 seconds. Okay? <laughs> it's work intensive. Okay? I'm running out of air telling you what to do here. There's, there's just there's a lot. It's a lot more involved. Okay? Now, let me wrap it up because I'm getting towards the end. If you couldn't believe it, I'm going to tell you about the 320. So uh, if you have a start anomaly, right, we're going to uh, go for the abort engine start. There's only one memory item, engine start lever to cut off. That's the one memory item. We call for the appropriate checklist, abort engine start checklist. 7.1 is a QRH, if you're wondering. Okay, I've done it a couple times. And then you reference it, you read it, you go through it. Then you're going to communicate with maintenance what they want you to do, if they want you to try attempt another relight, that kind of thing. But you are in control of uh, the detection of the anomaly, the aborting of the start, and then taking that action to bring the start lever to cut off. Now shift over to a 320 now, okay, which is what I actively fly. It's what I have uh, also been uh, training regularly over the last three years. Uh, on the on the 73NG, you got to understand, I, I've spent probably upwards of 46, 4,700 hours in level D sims and 737 sims. For the last three years, I've been primarily focusing on 320 while still staying current on my 73NG because we teach both here at One Step Prep, as you all know. On the 320, though, those of you that are transitioning over to the 320, I've got good news for you. The workload's significantly less, particularly right here where we're talking about the engine start. So you got the APU running, you got the APU bleeds air on, right? Same thing, you gotta have an air source, okay? So we're assuming the APU is operative here. We've got the APU bleed on, and here are the steps. You ready? Okay, put your seatbelt on, because there's a lot, sorta. You bring the ignition select switch, okay, over to the, you click it clockwise to the right, okay, to the ignition start position. You take the master switch, <laughs> okay, and you put it on. Get it all offer. I'm in an A320 sim, as you can see. Get it all offer, okay? That means the entire A320, 7.3 NG, or classic program, the elite. That's year-round option, okay? A fundamentals of instruction course, interview prep, audio programs, ebooks, playbooks, everything we have ever created for the price that you see on your screen there, you can literally get it all offer. We've never done this before. I hope you take advantage of it. It's one of these special uh, quarantine deals, crazy times, call for crazy measures. And we're offering something to you that we've never done before. So I hope you take advantage of it, grab it, and we'll see you in the courses.